I like nighttime. I love taking pictures at night, especially of city skylines. Let me take you to a journey through the night and let me show you how to take the best pictures of city skylines at night. I think nights are magical. The lights, everything. Nights just seem calmer for me. I like working at night. I'm more creative at night. I like taking a walk at night. I like driving through the night. I can better think at night. I have ideas. I find solutions. At nighttime, it just comes easier to me. I like the lights. I like the moon. I like the stars. When I was a kid, I spent some time in a hospital. I was afraid at points. To calm me down, I spent time looking out the window at the city night lights. They gave me comfort. Until this day, wherever I am, I'm drawn to places where I can oversee the city lights at night. Behind every light there is a life. A happy life. A struggling life. A family. Someone alone. Someone dreaming. Someone working. Someone fighting. Someone laughing. Someone crying. Someone loving. Someone hoping. Someone creating. Looking down on a city at night is very inspiring for me. Don't get me wrong. I like nature. I like the ocean. But at night, the ocean is a black hole. Nothing. Visually dead. The city lights represent life for me. Even my desktop background on my computer or my iPad has mostly a photo of a city skyline at night. When I go over my photos over the years, I find some great memories of cities I really like. So let's talk about how to take the best photos of a city skyline at night. First, the basic setup. I already have set up my camera on my Peak Design tripod. I have set the ISO to 100 because I'm going to shoot at a 280 focal length and I don't have the most stable tripod. So I'm going to use this remote cable, which I'm going to plug in right now. This has to be plugged in here on the side. The reason for that is that coming nighttime, we will have an exposure time of one to two seconds and we need to avoid eruptions of the camera. So this is one possibility to later release the shutter. When using a Leica camera, you can also use the Leica Photos app to release the shutter remotely. I am sure other brands have similar cables or apps. The third possibility is to set a self-timer of at least two seconds. Let me give you a quick overview of the basic preparation. Use a tripod. Set the ISO to 100 or the base ISO of your camera. If you use a Leica, shoot in DNG. If you're using an other brand, use the RAW format of your camera. Set the shutter speed to 1 to 2 seconds. Depending on the brightness of the city, you can go longer. Depending on how dark or bright the light pollution is, or how dark the sky at night is, it's possible that bright lights will burn out when using longer exposure times. Depending on the lens, it can also happen that the bright light points will get little star shapes. I would recommend not going longer than 8 seconds. If possible, don't press the shutter button directly on the camera. Use a remote cable, the app or a self-timer. After talking about the basic setup, let me show three different possibilities of taking great photos of city skylines at night. First, how to take high-resolution shots with a basic full-frame or cropped frame camera. I'm up here on Royal Canyon right now and I'm trying to make a shot today of the Beverly Hills skyline, which is still dark, but it will light up eventually and when the night sky comes down, the city will start glowing. And I'm planning to shoot most of the shots on 280 and then later stitch them together. I, I'm dreaming of a medium format camera until this day, I don't own one yet because the medium format cameras probably can even make crispier city skylines than the Leica SL2 can. But I'm trying to like replicate a kind of a medium format feeling by making several pictures, up to 20, 25 pictures, and then stitch them together.
Here are my tips for high resolution shots. Take a longer lens and take several pictures of the part of the city and put them later together in Lightroom or another program that can stitch together pictures to a panorama photo. Remember to give it a little bit space and take more pictures on the borders that your final result should be, because in the end you have to crop it a little bit. I would recommend to take an aperture of 4 to 5.6 and see that you definitely don't have a longer exposure than 2 seconds. You also have to wait until the sky is really dark. If you do it during magic hour, you have different shades of blue or grey in the sky when you later stitch the photos together. The second possibility to do a high-resolution shot with the SL2 is the multi-shot feature. Other brands support this as well. The Leica SL2's multi-shot features captures eight consecutive images with slight sensor shift adjustments and combines them in camera into a single high-resolution image. The problem with multi-shot pictures is that the longest shutter speed is one second. So most of the times you will not have enough light when using ISO 100. And honestly, you get the much better result doing the panorama version and stitch them together. It's, in my opinion, much sharper. It probably depends on the pixel density on the sensor. You cannot overcome that, even if you triple the pixels by shifting the sensor. The third possibility, especially during magic hour, is to use exposure bracketing. There is this moment where all of a sudden the sky is darker than the lights of the city. This is the perfect moment to use exposure bracketing, because you have then the possibility to capture all the information of the lights by slightly underexposing, and at the same time you have all information of the darker parts, especially of the structure of the buildings or trees. Of course my camera has a good amount of dynamic range, but still it helps to underexpose and overexpose some of the pictures and then put them as HDR pictures together later in Lightroom. Still, it's summer. It's cold up here in summer. Here is an overview of the settings when using exposure bracketing. Set the aperture to 5.6 or 8. Don't go higher than 8. Set a maximum exposure time of 2 seconds. Set your bracketing to at least 3 photos. In some cases, you can even set it to 5 photos. Set EV to 1. If you use a camera with less dynamic range, I would recommend doing 5 photos and setting EV to 0.75. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe. And remember, always stay curious. See you in the next video. Thank you.